Hello guys, uh, I'm Krish here and uh, today we will be discussing or uh, we will be having a webinar on uh, Power Query and Power BI application on the demand forecasting and procurement data. So I hope uh, I'm audible to you guys and uh, you're able to see my screen. So I'll be sharing my data in a few minutes and uh, from there we will be going into the session. So uh, there are some people are joining here, I think on the teams and the uh, same thing is live we are telecasting live on the facebook channels also you can uh, if you're not uh, joining our uh, teams you can also you can also access uh, our uh, facebook uh, or even other social media channels from there you will be able to access the the live on this program so before uh, we move forward i would like to discuss that uh, so I hope you might have some experience on Power Query. If you do not have the experience on Power Query, so there is no problem. We'll be going uh, step by step and explaining you the details. So meanwhile, I'm just uh, downloading my uh, data from this the local system. Then we'll go step by step into the process. me some time because I'm just downloading the data now uh, when we do the live telecast or live broadcast system uh, speed comes down so uh, the system speed comes down at that time we have to be too slow but I think once we have the data then I think we will be able to move forward uh, uh, in a good speed Please bear with me first.
think some problem is there in the system we're getting not getting downloaded Seems like we got a success now in downloading the data. Seems like we got a success now in downloading the data. It doesn't happen like this every time. Uh, this is something like uh, maybe uh, happening now. Maybe there is. Uh, bug in the system or maybe there is uh, space issues might be there but this happen doesn't happen every time generally you know if you want to download if you want you want to get your data from the system it takes uh, hardly less than uh, 30 seconds or 20 seconds to get the data probably this is the first file i think i was not using this laptop for a long time just for this uh, webinar i am uh, using this laptop so probably that is the reason why it is taking so much time. Finally, we have a data now. So we'll be working on this data using Power Query. So uh, uh, the most important thing in supply chain is uh, the most of the is uh, you know uh, we we need to have a good data which we can use to you know create plans or to do the predictions for the future. But actually, and also you know you know when we want to create those kind of data, uh, those kind of reports and plans and uh, you know predictions, uh, predictive uh, modeling data, what we want is that we don't want to create them uh, you know every time. So when I say if I don't want to create every time, what is the meaning of that? The meaning of uh, is that you know you don't want to you know spend time on transformation, extraction, transformation, and loading process, right? So if you want for spending the time on extraction, transformation, and loading, then I think you are actually uh, you know you are wasting a lot of time. So you know what is the what is the definition of extraction, transformation, loading? See, extraction means that you are you are trying to, you are you are pulling the data from you know from a ERP. Using uh, maybe uh, you're writing some SQL queries, right? So you want to pull the data from the SQL from the ERP using uh, writing SQL queries, and the data will be pulled out of the system, and uh, you know then that data can be connected with the Power Query, or if you want to, uh, if you not want to connect the data with the Power Query, right? So you can actually also you know put into your system, internal system, and from there you can pull pull it inside the you know here. So let me see, uh, let me draw a process here. Suppose you have a, this is your ERP.
Let me insert a process diagram. That's the better. Okay, so what I'm doing is you have a data within the ERP. From ERP, you actually extract the data. Then you do, suppose if the data which you have extracted from the ERP is not actually what he, in the shape you want. You have to do n number of uh, transformations on that, right? For example, if your data is uh, in, a, in a text format, you want to convert your data from text format into a number format. If your data is in the, you know, uh, in the, uh, you know, in a number format, you want to convert data in from number format to the to the uh, currency format. If you have data where you have multiple columns, uh, multiple uh, phrases mixed, you want to split the columns. So then you can you can split those uh, columns uh, from one column to three or four columns, right? So uh, if you want to make relationships, suppose you have two or three Excel sheets and you want to use VLOOKUP function or HLOOKUP function or you want to use a XLOOKUP function. And from those uh, uh, operations, you want to merge two or three files, right? You want to transfer data from one file, file to the another file and from one file to the another, uh, second file to the third file. So that is called transfer of data and by connecting with the unique codes. So that is, you know, those kind of stuff, it takes some time. And uh, if you want to do the same step every day, then it takes more time, right? First of all, when you do for the first time, it takes some time. And if you repeat that particular process every day, right to create a you know a template then it takes even more time so what we want to do is that we want to show you a process where you can eliminate this you know the uh, first of, uh, the first time creation of template and repeating the process of creating a template every day or every two day or three days and that is called you know the transformation process which we want to eliminate right the transformation process and the let the last one is called once once you are once your operations are over, the, uh, so what we do, we actually make the data load to the load for the analysis. Load for analysis. So what you're doing is you're writing a SQL, SQL query within the uh, for ERP. You're pulling the data, means you're extracting the data from the system of, from the ERP, and then you're doing transformation. So transformation process is a process which is called when you're making your data analyzable. So you're making your data analyzable by using the transformation process, right? So if, uh, because the data which you pull from the ERP, right, that may not be ready for the, anal for the analysis or for the analytics. So what we need to do is that you need to pull the data from the system and extract the data from the system. And then you have to do the transformation on that. When you do transformation on the data, right, then your data is becoming analyzable. Otherwise, you know, there, is, uh, there are a lot of problems will be there, uh, you know, uh, in terms of the accuracy, in terms of the, you know, the summarization, right? You want to make a decision. And if you want to make a decision, you want a clear cut template or clear cut data. And if you're not having a clear cut data to make a decision, then if you, you know, the, the, uh, the ambiguity uh, uh, will remain for a long time. And that ambiguity, if, if it is there in the data, then that is not going to be helpful for you to make decisions. So the transformation process is something what you have to do a lot of things in the data, on the data, over the data, inside the data. And then from that, you have to make your data in a created data in the form of analyzable, in the, in, the, in the analyzable form. And then once you have the analyzable form, then you will load the data into your, inside your database, right? It's a database or you can save the data inside your folders in the system. So this process, which is called ETL, extraction, transformation, and loading, ETL process. We call this as a ETL process, and this is a very, very important process. If somebody if, if, uh, is a person, is a data analyst, the person is a data analyst or uh, working in data regularly, if you want, you know, they want to reduce the time on working on the data, right? Because we are the operations people. So price chain is, you know, basically run on the uh, through the operation. Not through, Of course, we have to use the data to run the operations, right? But we should not spend too much time on the data. If you're spending too much time on, on the data, 
then you are not working on the on the operations or your your time on operations is very less so if you want to improve your time on operations you have to reduce your time on the data op data analysis okay so with less time spent on data analysis and getting higher productivity out of data analysis right we have to spend less time and get the higher productivity so if you want to spend less time and get the higher productivity from the data then you will be able to spend you will be able to spend much smarter time on the operations so if you have a good data means your smart data you then you are become your your operations also will become very smart so you are spending very so you have to create your structure of the data analysis in such a way that you have to reduce your time on work you have to reduce your time working on the data and spend and also you have to get a very good analysis out of the data so that you work very smart on the operations that is what the main benefit or main takeaway you will get from this etl process okay so i hope you understand if you have any questions you can post the questions on the you know on on the chat box or on the you know if you are uh, accessing this from the social media pages then just post your queries over there then i'll be on, i'll be able to answer your your questions on that now let's see what is this etl process is all about right so i understood i gave the concept what is the main purpose of this etl process the main purpose of etl process is that you have to spend less time on data transformations data and you have to make your data very very analyzable so that your time on data analysis reduces which will ultimately take your time more on the operation side so that you get you earn more revenue and save more money for the company save more money for the company and ultimately you will have more profit margins right so that is what the mean otherwise if your team is spending too much time on the data analysis making decisions out of the data then how much time they will spend on the operations right what you want is your team to spend more on of course data analysis is a very important thing but you have to make your data analysis operations very simpler very quick very smart and and uh, you know automated so that you achieve that you are able to achieve then your operation will become automatically become smart that is the main purpose of using this process so if you use this process for for your after learning after completing this uh, webinar if you are able to use this entire thing for your operations then i think you will get a lot of benefit of, uh, for your company right so now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to start the process the first thing what you need to do is that you have to go to data so there is data data over here which is in excel sorry again it has gone slowed down probably have to move this uh, dark screen from here So some problems we are facing, which are you know, which are which are occurring for the first time. This problem we don't face regularly. Let me open a new file. Let me see if we are able to. Okay, so I'm clicking on data here. So after clicking on data, then what we have to do is that we have to go to this option called get data. In within get data, you have you can see multiple options coming over here. The first option is called from file, from database, right? You can get the data from the SQL Server database, from the Microsoft Access database. Right? There are many databases are there. For people, if you have a data, SAP, HANA, Teradata. So if you wanted to get the data from those uh, servers, you get from there 
from Azure, from online services. Suppose if you have a data on uh, in the Facebook, or you want if you have a data in the you know the uh, SharePoint, right? So from you can get their data from there also, right? So, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to get data from the file. So there are various options are there. So if you want to get the data from your online sources, like if you want to get data from the you know link, suppose you have a data in the link, you know, hyperlink, HTML uh, link. Even you can that you can get that data from the link also. Okay. So now I have in this for this case we have a data in our local system. So I'm going to go to my from file, then go to Excel workbook. So it is going to, once I click this Excel workbook, it is going to take me to the my local system folders. And I have to, once it goes local system folders, I have to pick the data which I have to uh, use for this uh, project. Okay, so I'm going to take one of, one of the data from here. It's called job header, uh, job card summary. So let me import this data inside the Excel. So what I did, I went to data. From data, I went to get data. In get data, there are various options are there. Within that options, I went to the from file and then I choose the workbook. And as soon as I choose a workbook, it has taken to be taken into the local system uh, folder. And from there, I am trying to import the data inside the Excel. Now see, what I have to install? I have to import this one. So I'm clicking on this particular sheet in that particular file. So here I have a data, which is a job card summary data. Right? This is a job card summary data. Now what I am doing, I have two options over here. First option is that, see, we are this is our extraction process, right? We have done the extraction process. We have data in the system. Now, second part we have discussed already that is transformation process. And third part is a loading process. So if you want to see what, where can we do the transformation and where can, from where we can do the loading. So here, if you look at here on this data at the bottom, you can see there's a transform data option. Okay. There's a transform data option and there is a load option. So if you think that this data does not, does not record any kind of transformation, any kind of transformation, you can go and load the data inside the Power Query. But if you think that this data needs some transformation and those transformations has to be automated so that for the next time when you use this data, same data, you don't need to do the similar transformation on the data, right? So there are two options. You want, if you want to load the data, then click over here. If you want to transform the data, then click over here, right? So we have to do the transformation over here because we think that this data is still not analyzable. If the data is not still analyzable, then what we have to do? We have to do the transformation on the data. So I'm going to click on this transform data because the data is not analyzable. So I'm what I am going to do, I have to make data in a proper analyzable form. For that, I need to do the transformation. So this, when I click on transformation, I'm going into the power query. This is a power query window. I hope you are able to see the power query window. Right, so uh, so we are able to now we are able to move into the Power Query window, and here what we're going to do is a transformation so that we can create a data which is analyzable for planning and prediction, or for strategy uh, planning prediction and for strategy development. Right, so now we are moving into our Power Query. So here, if you look at here, there are various kind of options are there. Right, so first let's see, choose columns, remove columns. Keep rows, remove rows, split column, right? Group by the group by columns. Use first row as headers, replace values, merge queries, append queries, right? We have to bring a new source, recent sources, and then I go to transform part. So here we can also do unpivot columns, pivot columns, replace values, extract, format, split columns. There's so many things, so many tools are available here. If I want to add a column, I can add a column. I can add a column from the examples or I can, or if I have to create a new column, I have to go to custom column. If I have to invoke a, a column with a custom function, I can do that also over here. 
right i can create a conditional columns you know suppose in excel we use in excel we use if formulas so in this case we don't need to use we need, we can directly go to conditional column and create those uh, you know uh, conditional columns right so so many features are available here and all these features we can use to create to create a data which is analyzable to get it which is analyzable right so this is what we are going to use over here and you know what happens is whatever steps we take to transform the data whatever steps we take to transform the data those steps will be saved in this area called applied steps you can see applied steps in the right hand side in my cursor if you, my cursor is moving over here so this is the area where all your steps which you are going to take to transform the data will be saved here so this is a area if you want to delete some of this some of the steps if you want to delete some of the steps you can also delete from the same area if something is added it will get added here something has to be deleted it will be deleted from here only right so you have to work on this power query uh, you know uh, window screen and whatever steps you will take it will be added in the applied step whatever steps you want to delete you can delete from the applied steps right for example if you want if you want suppose you think that you know this data is uh, is something you know you want to change in the data and you want to get a new data inside this if the power query so what you do you have to go to source here and there is a if you look at here there is a settings icon over here so if you click on settings icon settings icon you will be getting a new pop up window in that window you will see you will be able, you will be able to see a path the path of the file right this is a path of the file where from we got this file inside the power query so you want to you want to bring a new data so what you do you click on browse click on browse and get a new data and change it right so as of now we don't want a new data over here so we'll keep as it is whatever we have okay so this is what data which we have right now so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to click on this data data area and i expand this okay and i want all of them over here so i click okay oh sorry i have to remove this cancel I have to remove let me go do once again click on this data expand this okay and i use i remove this use original column name as prefix i'm removing them i'll just click on insert now so once i click this i'll be able to get the full data over here this step may not be required in real time the reason because we have uh, I, I gave i was trying to show an example over here how to change the source file that's the reason why it is it has come like that see this is a file name i don't want the file name here so i will delete this file name from here so i'll, I'll just click up click this column right click and remove from here so if i click on this area this uh, power column will be removed and uh, you know this step is saved over here look at here remove columns the step is saved right so whatever we do uh, you know this, it will be saved over here now if you look at here our header or the labels are in the row number 3 they are not in the top they are in the, suppose country what is the country name what is the location what is the job number what is the description of the product what is the status of the job right so all this is in the third number row third row but i want this on the first row so what i'm going to do here is that i'm going to go to home there are two ways to execute this one way is that we'll go and click on the first row as headers there's two ways to execute this the first way i'm going to i'm going to show i will show another way also so if you look at here it was in the third row not came to second row now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to click on this again use first row as the headers now it right now second row if we will see it will move to the first row right but still i want as this as a label right now still it's not label so i'll go and click over here once again and you will see <clears throat> this will move to the label area and 
guys and this step you don't like uh, you have you don't need to do for the second time when you get the data from the erp so this is data which you got from the erp and uh, you know we don't uh, in the second time you don't need to do all those things because all your steps getting saved over here right so you know what you have to do is that you have to go to the folder you have to go to the folder you know just uh, delete the previous file suppose we have the same file delete the previous file and upload the new file in the folder and give the same name Give the same name even with the you know like if you have underscore if you have a dot if you have a caps right everything has to be same so give the same file name so suppose if you on two after two days you want to change the file after three days you want to change the file um, this is something what happens because you know we will have n number of transactions happening in supply chain and we want to capture those transactions after two three two two days three days one week or ten days into the file so what you do go back to the folder go back to the folder where from where you did the access data remove the file remove the previous file and uh, upload the new file copy paste a new file and give the same file name and after you see the same file name just come over here just now it's not uh, you know we, we have to upload this then we have to i'll show just you just you have to click refresh button after you click the refresh button your entire transformation uh, will happen on the new data which you have uploaded not on the old data right so this is a one time effort which you can do within the power query and you can refresh the uh, before refreshing you have to upload a new data a new data into your folder give the same file name right then uh, the two things have to be same the folder has to be same like the pre previous uh, file and the name has to be same right of course if we are uploading a new data but the same file in the same folder and then you come to the power query uh, in the table and then you just click refresh everything will be you will get a new everything will be refreshed means you are getting a new data now okay so now if you see now we have the header right headers or right labels for our data now if you look at here in this case there are some nulls over here right these nulls we don't if we have this kind of nulls we cannot do any we, we, this nulls are not helpful for the analysis these nulls are not helpful for the analysis so i go to country right i'm going to choose all the nulls from here i'm going to remove the nulls from here and click okay so what will happen this will this will remove so we have nulls it will be removed and this data and uh, you know uh, after removing the nulls we will go we will get a data which is without the null right so once we remove the null we have made this data a little bit more analyzable right the two things we have done to make big data analyzable first is that we made our gave the labels second thing is we remove the nulls from here okay now let's go to third column if anything else is there which we have to remove i think i don't see anything over here to remove from here so here if this is location this is country okay this is location and this is country here so suppose what i want to do is that i want to i don't want to have the last two part of this data like krt pvt veh i don't want pvt and eh from here I want KRT to, KRT to be separated from here, right? KRT is a location, it is a location name, location short name. That is one of, one of the things we will do. So let's check some of, some more uh, some more things which we have to transform. So here I will not have PVT VEH. I will just have KRT here. Okay. So <clears throat> job number. I don't want to. Uh, I want to keep job number here. This is internal or external, right? So I stands for internal, E stands for external. So perfect fine. We don't want to do anything over here. Everything is fine. Now we'll go to description. So what is the job description here, right? So there is a job description over here. So wherever we have a blank, right? We don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unselect the blank from here and I'm going to remove. Now we we have made one more step in making the data analyzable, right? We have removed from the description whatever is a blank. Okay. Now job job status. What is the job, current job status, right? Suppose uh, you want to do analysis for work in progress only for work in progress. You can select only the work in progress. If you want to do analysis for both of them, you can. Uh, there's no change. You, uh, you don't need. To, you don't need to make any changes over here. But if you want to make changes, like you want to analyze analyze for the close one, or you want to make the analysis work in progress, you can select one of them and click OK. So uh, as of now, we don't want to do any changes over here. So I'll keep as it is. Now we have an asset ID. It's a very important, uh, very very important column for us because we're going to make our data transferable from one uh, sheet to another. 
or link one particular function with another function based upon this asset ID. So we have a driver name here. So suppose uh, there where a driver name is not available, means you can uh, you know you can actually remove that. But let's say let's I'm removing the wherever driver name is not there. I'm going to remove as of now because that is not going to help me for some of some of the analysis. So I'm going to remove this. I'm going to make you know. So now we have removed. We have made one more transformation. So we got a new driver name. Uh, we got a data with only driver names. We are not taking anything with which is without driver names. Okay, so this is one of the things we have achieved now here. Now we'll go to asset ID 2. So we don't want asset ID 2 because we have an asset ID that's enough for us. So I'm going to remove this column from here. So this column is removed and I have, I don't want this column anywhere, right? And now we have an asset type, which is truck or this is generator. Let us, if you see this, the, this is not the full list. If you want to have the, see the full list and click load more. Once you click load more, it will be, it will uh, show the li total list of all what kind of asset types we have. Now, suppose if you want to choose uh, some asset types, uh, special, uh, you know, specific, spe uh, specific asset types for which you want to do analysis, right? Suppose uh, I want to, I want to plus click on select all. I want to choose something which I want to do analysis for. I want to do analysis for light vehicle, truck. And tanker, right? So I want to do analysis for light vehicle, tanker, and truck. I don't want to do analysis for uh, car, generator, and all those things. Uh, so you, if you have the requirement for, suppose based upon your requirement, you can you know, shortlist, shortlist your components from here. So that is one of one of the things which you can do over in this. And 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 once again, I tell you, right? This is not uh, we are doing. Uh, this is a one time. One time transformation. So from next time onwards, you don't need to do all these transformations. So whatever I have done doing here, about the selections I am doing, whatever transformation I'm doing, this is for you know lifelong. So every time you get a new data from the ERP, just upload the data into the folder, get, change the name, means make the name similar to what we have in this particular thing. And then you have to go to just click on go and refresh. Everything will get a new uh, everything you'll get for the new data in the same transform way. For here, suppose if I have a make code here, so Mercedes and Toyota. So I don't, I don't want to do analysis for all the brands. I want to do analysis for the Mercedes. So what I will do, I'll just click on here, Toyota, remove the Toyota. If I suppose, let's see if you have some more brands other than these two. So I'm clicking on load more. If some, something else is there, Toyota as well as Mercedes, I don't want to do analysis for Toyota. I want to do analysis for the Mercedes. So let me see if we are able to get them here or not. Okay, so here we have seen so many brands over here. So I'll, I'm going to click unselect all, uh, select all, then I choose only Mercedes from here. Okay, so here we have seen so many brands over here. So I'll, I'm going to click unselect all. So now what we are seeing over here is that the make, make code is getting filtered and we are doing analysis only for the Mercedes here. So what are you doing, guys? So if you look at what I'm doing, I'm making a big data into a small data, right? So we have very big data. And from that big data, I'm making a small data. And why the reason why I'm making small data? Because I don't want to do analysis on everything. My analysis focused on, you know, uh, some specific uh, specific uh, attributes. I don't need to do. I need to do select everything from the data and do analysis for all of them. So I am doing analysis for a specific element, a specific attribute from a specific columns. So that is how you can actually reduce your data size. That is how that is how you can increase the velocity of your uh, data analysis. So you need to keep, you have to uh, do some narrow down. You have to narrow down on your analysis on the data. If you are doing a narrow down on the, on the data, then you can increase your data size, you can reduce data size, increase the velocity of data, uh, data analysis, 
right? And also, you don't need to build huge data inside your servers. Unnecessary if you are having a huge data into your servers, it means that you know you are uh, because you have a limited data size, you have a limited uh, data space in your servers, right? You should not load your data, you know, with the uh, huge files. You have to load the data with only the files which are file size or file called you know, in for data uh, file space, which is you know, which is required for the analysis. See how beautifully we are doing this, how this tool is helping us to you know make a big data into a relevant data. We're not making a data small data. In making a big data into a relevant data, right? So within this, suppose the models. So there are so many models are there. We'll go over all the models here. Now, if you look at your job date, this is a very important column, guys, because you know, for if you are doing analysis in uh, supply chain, time is a very important factor. So we are time is a very very important factor which we uh, use for the planning scheduling right and prediction right so how to see if you look at this data there are two kind of forms are there one is at 11 february 2022 second is 20 uh, 12 2021 but both are both are at the way one is on the left hand side other than the right hand side so suppose if i go and do and i click on uh, change type right so if, uh, one thing i also want to show here so if uh, the, the another important thing in supply chain data is the format of the data if you look at the format of data here is this is in text as well as number format right this is in text as well as number format so i think one of the date it is treating as text and one of the date is treating as uh, uh, treating as number right but we don't want either te neither text nor nor the number we want the format as date so what i'm going to do i'm going to click right click over here click on change type see the change type and I'm going to go and click on date. The moment I do click on date, it is going to transform the data into date format. But there will be some problem, I think. Let's see what, what is the problem. Wherever, so if you, I showed initially that there are two kinds of formats in this particular column. But one thing first is that we have achieved our date format. See, look at the calendar symbol. The calendar symbol signifies that we have made our date as date format. It, previously, it was in text and number format. So wherever the number was there, it, it transformed the number into date. But wherever the number was in the text form, wherever the number was in the text form, it was it couldn't able to transform into date. It's showing error. So the uh, what we have to do is that I have to go and delete that step because this is not giving me the right output. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and click on the change type. Right. So now if you see, we got back our initial. We, uh, we got the uh, job date as it was in the uh, beginning. Uh, because now we see this number is being treated as text. This number is being treated as number. So let me do one more one more uh, way. Let's see if we, can, we are able to achieve that, that, uh, that or not. I'm going to convert this change type into number. So everything I want to I want to have in the form of number. Let's see if that works. Again, it is not working here, right? If you see, this is uh, this date is converting into a number, but this is this text is going into error. So I'll go back again and delete the steps. So I got back what I wanted is right. I will use technique here. The technique is that I'm going to split the data into three form, three different ways. Means I'm going to split this number 11 to 2022 into three different columns. Then I'll combine them together. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to right click over here. Then let me see if you have a split columns here. Copy, remove, duplicate, uh, add column, remove errors. We don't, we are not able to see the split column function over here. So I'm going to go here in the top. 
if this is split column, I'm going to call split this column by using a delimiter. And the delimiter is, is the separator between two data points. So I'm going to use a delimiter, this uh, uh, slash, okay? And then I'm going to split this into, let's click, let's click on this advanced options. So there are three columns. Suppose if you want to clip in four columns, you can make it four. If you want to split into two columns, you can split in two, right? So I'm clicking here, three columns, and then click OK. So what will happen here is that this job date is going to split into three different columns, right? 11, 2, 11. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to combine these three, uh, combine these three into one. After splitting, I'm combining now. So what I'm going to do, right click, give a uh, select option called merge columns. I'm going to use separator here as a custom. Let me go to custom and give a separator name hyphen, give a name job date. Click OK. So, what we're going to see is that these three columns will be combined together in this form. And if you see, this is showing us a text format, right? This is not a date format. So again, I'll go here, right click, change type, and click on the date. Let me see if it works now or not. Still, it is not working, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this step. Now, I'm going to add a column, custom I'll give a name here. Job date one. I'm going to use a formula called date dot date dot format date dot from text date dot from text and the column is which you want to you want to use is this is the column job date. Click insert. I'm going to give the format is equal to DD mm. and here. I'm going to write a culture, writing a code here, guys, DE is equal to DE, close the bracket. Let's see, there is some problem in the formula. Let's see what is the problem.
So we have a job date here. Let's see whether this formula is working or not. No, this formula is not working here. So let me uh, change the formula. Let's just click over here. I'll remove this double inverted commas from here. Let's see if it works or not. Okay, still we're getting error. So I'm going to make changes in the formula once again. Let us see some more examples, some more efforts. Okay, some transformation we got over here and some of the still we're getting the same problem that is showing us error. We got one of the success, one success, but uh, so we are getting job date from here. Let me show you the formula once again, job date.
let me remove this uh, this is Yeah, the formula is uh, resolved now. Let's try this. See whether it's worked or not. So still we're getting an error here. So we have a job date, and here we have five one two zero one four the twelve two twenty two thirty two. So here we are trying to convert this formula into a date format. Let's remove this uh, uh, of culture here, France. So we are seeing take table dot add columns, merge columns, job date one, job date one. So we are using job date one. So do we have any job date to one? The job date one is the okay. This is around uh, each dot dot from text job date. Come off format days culture we will do
<coughs> let's do one thing. Let's delete this. So we have this date, this date, and this date. Let's join again them. March columns. Separate tab. Custom. This one. Hence type and click on date. We're getting the same issues again. So I'll remove the step from here. Go to add columns. Custom columns. Date. Date. So guys, what we'll do here is that uh, we will, uh, this formula is not working here. So we have to see why it is not working. So meanwhile, what I'll do is that I'll convert this into date format from here itself. And whatever is not working, we will see, I'll see it later. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to remove all the errors from here.
So now we're replacing the errors with a date. Same thing we'll do over here also. Just click on right click, change type, date. And then we'll replace the errors. So this is job and time. This should be in uh, time. So we'll put change type into time. This is our uh, days of uh, re uh, recycle. So we have to change this into number. Let me remove this last step. I go right click again, change type to floating number, decimal number. Right. Now we have decimal number here. We need to keep in a this is an odometer, so we have to we need to have this into a whole number. This is again we need to have an old uh, whole number. All right now we have to change the parts cost to decimal number. That's why we are changing here. Now the cost total also has to be changed into currency. Right, so the hours has to be changed into time. This is not the right format, so we'll go change type to decimal number. This is right, the comments are right. And I'm going to delete this step. I'm going to delete this column also. I'm going to delete this column also. I'm going to delete this column also. We don't want this column. If you don't want, if you don't want this uh, department also, we'll remove. This is all same. If you want, you can demo the, uh, we have asset type. How many asset types? We have only truck, single asset type, or we need, we have some more asset types. I think we have selected truck, light vehicles. Okay, so this is data which we have uh, transformed and all the steps which we have done, it is available over here. And from here, we'll go to home and then click close and load, close and load to. So this is the loading. So we have done the extraction. Now we have done the transformation. And finally, we are dying, we are doing the loading step over here. So this completes our ETL transaction for one of the data. So if you look at here, it's asking me to select like this is a table format and I want this as a data model. Data model means if you are having multiple data and then you want to combine those multiple data using the power pivot. We'll also see power pivot in the next session. So if you want to combine multiple sheets into power pivot using uh, into a pivot table, so that's, that can be done only using power pivot. So if you add the data into as a data model, then that uh, all the multiple sheets which you are taking and there if you are giving them as a name or nomination as a data model then you will be able to use able to combine them suppose i have 10 sheets or 15 sheets i want to combine all the 10 15 sheets into one pivot table then for that you need to you, you need to uh, you know convert the data into data model
So guys, this is what we have the data model, and this is the transform data. This is transform data, right? So now this is what we're going to use for analysis. This is a data which we are going to use for analysis. So we have removed most of the things which are not required. We have done some transform. Of course, we have to do some more improvement on the date. But I will, uh, you know, uh, give us a, uh, an update on the social media pages. How to actually write? A, uh, what is it? Because I'm using a code and that code is not working. So probably I don't have a time to do the research at this moment and uh, improve the improve the code. So what I will do is that I will do it offline and I will share the code to you on the social media pages, which you can access. Right. So guys, I think this is what I wanted to sh uh, show uh, for one of the sheets. There are some more sheets which I have to upload. You have to do the ETL and bring you the database. Like if you look at it, we will have a database over here, like job card is there. So we'll bring multiple data sheets over here, multiple uh, you know, the data models over here. And after getting the multiple data models, we'll combine them into one pivot table. And which that pivot table, which we will give, uh, give us the, the total analysis or total insights, right? So that I will schedule in the next session. So I think there's a lot of time we have this. I, I have wasted because, uh, because of the slow system and some formula errors. So that's I'm sorry for that. I'm not able to show you the total analysis, total uh, thing in this in this particular webinar. So I'll be arranging one more webinar very soon, and in that you will be able to see some more sheets getting added as data model after transformation, and then we'll combine those, those two or three sheets together to derive one pivot, uh, pivot table from three or four sheets and using power pivot, and then we will generate the insights out of that. So that is what I'm going to show you in the next webinar. So thank you guys very much for, for watching this video and uh, giving us the motivation uh, by sharing your queries, interest. And then we will be coming with one more, one more webinar. So please do uh, follow our social media pages. We'll be giving our uh, update on the over there. So you can join the next uh, webinar from there. Okay. Thank you very much, guys.